and welcome to this chapter entitled The Client Representation Agreements. These are the forms. Now, the last couple chapters you've been dealing with, you have, uh, we've been talking about agency and the agency relationship. And I showed you that that relationship gets created between that client and that agent, right? Now, no one asked, how do you create it? So today, we're going to talk about creating that agency relationship and the actual forms that can be used to do that. So let's get started. So in this representation, remember there are two sides to it. You can represent the seller and be the listing agent, or you can represent the buyer and become the selling agent, right? It's called the selling agent. So let's talk about how we represent the seller. Now, when you represent the seller, you will get them to sign a listing agreement. A listing agreement is actually an employment contract between the broker and the seller. Now, remember, we have touched on this before briefly, and I want you to understand that listing agreement is between the agent, which is who? Right, the managing broker and the seller. Even though it's your mother, you will not sign the listing agreement. I would, because the state only sees the one of us, remember? And they're all my listings, they're all my clients. So you will go out and get your mom to sign the listing agreement, and then I will sign the listing agreement. I sign all of the listing agreements in my brokerage. The agents do not, because it's mine. Remember, over the top, mine, mine, it's all mine. When we do that, we get them to sign a listing agreement form. And if you remember that under the statute of frauds, some contracts have to be so important or so important they have to be written. Well, this is one of those deals. I told you that real estate works under the statute of frauds. There is no such thing as an oral listing agreement. It must be in writing. And all states require the listing uh, agreement to be in writing to be enforceable in court. Now, there are three levels of listing agreements, all right? The first one I want to talk about is called the exclusive right to sell. What does the word exclusive mean? It means one. Therefore, I am the only one listing this property for sale. The seller can only enter into one exclusive listing. He cannot list his property with me and then go list his property with another brokerage as well under the exclusive right to sell because exclusive means one. And I am the only one that has the right to list the property. There is one broker and when that house gets sold, because I was the one listing it, I am seen as the procuring cause. Remember that word? Procuring cause was the initial, was the uh, uh, series of events that led to the sale. So the state views the listing as though I, as the managing broker, walked up to some guy and went, knocked on his door and said, hey dude, you're going to sell your house today and you're going to use me to do it. And he went, okay, I'll do it. That means I convinced him to sell and therefore I am the procuring cause. And when it closes, I get paid no matter what. All right. Understand that means no matter what. It doesn't matter who brings the buyer to this deal. All right. I could bring the buyer to this deal, and that would make me dual agent. I could allow another broker to bring their uh, buyer with me. I would get paid. If the seller himself finds the buyer, I get paid. If Santa Claus brings the buyer, 
I get paid, all right? It doesn't matter. Under the exclusive right to sell listing, I am the procuring cause simply by listing the property, which is the initial step that started the chain of events that led to a sale. I get paid no matter what. In your notes, go ahead and write NMW. I always write that on the board, no matter what. I don't care who gets paid. I don't care who brings the buyer. Anybody can bring the buyer. I get paid. I could be golfing in Hawaii and my assistant call me and go, hey, dude, we just got an offer on your listing. Great. I'm getting paid because I am the procuring cause under this exclusive right to sell. Now, the second one that we have is this thing called an exclusive agency listing, an exclusive agency. Now, once again, we have the word exclusive, meaning that the seller can enter into only one of these with one particular agency. I am the sole agent that is entitled to the commission regardless of whoever brings the buyer, except, please note what I just said so you hear that, except there is one exclusion to this. If the seller himself brings the buyer, there is no commission, all right? Now, I will tell you, the highest protection to the agent is number one here, because I get paid no matter what. Then a little below that is this exclusive agency. Means I get paid no matter what, unless the seller brings the buyer. So there's an exemption. It's a little less protection for me. We typically, most states that I teach in, do not even have a form for this. We don't really want the seller to know this could exist because it does present a little bit of a risk to the agent that the seller may find the buyer himself. He may call his cousin and go, hey, I've decided to sell my house. If he found the buyer, I don't get paid. If another agent brings the buyer, I still get paid, all right? So I list the house under an exclusive agency and you, with another company, bring a buyer, we get paid because there was agency involved in, on the buyer side. If I list the house as an exclusive agency and the seller brings his cousin, there's no commission paid, okay? So it's a little less protective. So the question that I always get is, well, why would you do that? Great question. Here's the best case that you might often see this. We have talked about a for sale by owner, FSBO, pronounced FISBO. This is a person who is selling their own home. They are not under any agency agreement with any brokerage at all. So you go knock on the door and you talk to him and you go, hey, I would love to be your listing agent. I would love to list this property for sale and I can help bring a buyer. And when I do, I want you to pay me a commission. And the seller says, well, you know, I have been selling bicycles my entire life. I don't really need you to uh, list the property because I think I could potentially sell it. So you try really hard to get them to sign this exclusive right to sell, which would say I get paid no matter what. But they are resisting it. So what you could potentially do is offer this up as a second option. Typically, this is not the go-to listing agreement that an agent wants because of the little bit of risk that's in there. So what you would say to this seller is go, okay, look here, let, let's play a game. How about you will let me list this property under an exclusive agency and you and I will have a race to see who brings the buyer. Fair, that's a good deal. And if I bring the buyer, 
or entice another agent to bring a buyer, we get paid. If you beat me in the race and you find your own buyer anyway, then you don't have to pay me. How about that? And now the seller goes, that's a good idea. I'll do that. So you have allowed that seller to still have a little bit of flexibility by selling their own home, which is what they were doing anyway. And you have added the benefit of you being involved in marketing it to your vast array of buyers or other agents that may have buyers. Okay. So you present it like kind of like a race. Hey, let's race. And knowing that you have got a way better chance of winning that race than potentially they do. As a for sale by owner, most of them, what do they usually do? They put an ad or they put a little thing on Facebook and they put their own for sale by owner sign in the yard. And the only people that see it are the people that drive up and down the road. Where you and I know as a trained professional, I've got a buyer's list of clients already. I have access to the MLS system, which we're going to get to here in a minute. And I know a network of thousands of other agents who each may have hundreds or dozens of buyers. So the potential for you to win is actually greater. So it is an option typically not the best option or not the first option to go with. Look at it like it's the one you might use to save the deal, all right? When they flat shut you down from using, going, well, no, I don't need your help. You could always offer this one as a placation or a second attempt or a compromise with the seller, all right? So those are the first two.